So in today's video, we're joined by the brilliant Mark Goldbridge, and we're going to be going through our current 23-man squad ahead of the Euros. Obviously, it's probably likely to change between now and the Euros, but who we've got down right now from goalkeeper all the way through to striker. And Mark, I'm going to start with you. Who have you got down as your sort of free goalkeeping option so far? Um, I'm probably going to do really bad on maths with this and, and take too many players, but um, I'm going to take three goalkeepers. And it's difficult because I, I will take Ramsdale, even though he's not playing, which is disappointing. Um, I thought he might have got a move in January somewhere, but I'll take Ramsdale. Got to take Pickford and uh, hopefully he's going to be back fit. So I'd take Nick Pope as well. So a bit boring, but yeah, I'd stick with those three. Yeah, I pretty much went with the same three as you, but I wasn't sure about... Nick Pope's fitness and I'm not going to lie I don't watch Scottish football really but everyone who supports Rangers has been going on about Jack Butland so I just yeah. put Pickford, Ramsdale and Butland in because I don't know what Nick Pope's availability will be like um, yeah, yeah so, makes sense yeah not watched him play though so I'm basically just going off Twitter hype there but I've gone with three right backs and I'm someone that gives Southgate a little bit of stick about picking so many defenders and picking so many fullbacks. But as my right backs, I've gone with Walker because I think he can play centre back, right back, Trippier because he can give cover at left back if Shaw gets injured. And then Trent because you can play him in midfield as my three right back options. Yeah, I mean I think I think I'd I'd probably agree with you on that uh for the same reasons. I, I would take Carl Walker because he can play more centrally if you want to play a three. Uh, I think he could play in a four either either as well. Um and right back, really, I can't really think of anybody that's going to break in to take Trippier's place. And I'd certainly take Trent. So, yeah, I'd agree with those three. I can't. I, can't, I mean, Reese James is not going to be fit, is he? So, yeah, I'll go with that. Yeah. If Reese James could stay fit, he'd 100% be in it for me, but can't take the risk. Um, so, going into centre backs, my one's probably going to be a little bit controversial compared to other people's because I haven't gone with names like Tamori, who everyone always throws up in there. And I've actually got three centre-back options written down, but my one of my left-backs is technically a centre-back and Luke Shaw could technically play centre-back is the way I'm seeing yeah. it. And I've just gone with Stones, Maguire, and I'm taking a bit of a risk here, but I'm going with Bramthwaite of Everton because he's 20, 21, mm. young coming through, and I think he could be a potential England player. Yeah, I've gone with... Um, I've got four. I've got Maguire and Stones, uh, and I've gone Tamori and Colwell. I don't think this is the way it's going to go because it's not how Southgate does it. Um, but similarly to you, I'm just looking more at the future. And I think Colwell and Tamoria are good centre-backs that um, should be getting more game time. And also, well, like you say, with Carl Walker there, I don't need five centre-backs. And also I'm going to take Luke Shaw who can play there as well. So I just think it's an area where four centre-backs is absolutely fine. Maguire and Stones is the experienced ones. And then, yeah, I'd take Tamoria and Colwell and not bother with people like Gwehi or Dunk or, you know, God yeah. forbid Eric Dyer or someone like that. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past Southgate to ping Eric Dyer or something like that. Um, yeah, no, I almost yeah. went with sorry, I almost went with uh, Colwell as well, but I've gone, I've taken the risk with Bramfway because I think he's been quite good at Everton. Yeah, no, I, I do like that selection, and um, yeah, it's a bit like when we talk about the midfield with Maynu, isn't it? I, I've got no issue with taking Branthwaite at all, but um, whether he'll do it or not, I suppose we'll, not, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Going into left back, the obvious one, Luke Shaw, best England left back by a bit. And then I've gone with something a bit different because I'm not sure about Chilwell and his availability at the moment. I've gone with Joe Gomez as a left back option, yeah, which might be controversial, but he's been doing really well there for Liverpool. And that's why I've got three centre back because I'm like, he can just be the fourth centre back if needed. If Luke Shaw's fit, Luke Shaw will play every game for me. Yeah, I've gone short and chill well, but uh, yeah, I think Joe Gomez is certainly somebody that um, is, is again going to be quite useful with regards to a tournament um, and can play anywhere across the back four. And you've also got the injury concern where, I mean, I'd pretty much guarantee Shaw and chill well, one of them is going to be injured before the Euros anyway. So yeah, good shout, but I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd go chill well and Shaw if they were fit. Yeah, I was just thinking a bit about versatility. Trippier could play left back if Shaw's injured, but you've also got Gomez who can play centre back. And I think that'll be important going into a tournament. Um, going into midfield, now Southgate will probably have, um, you know, Phillips and Henderson in there, but they're not making my midfield options. Um, if I start with the more defensive minded midfield options, I've got Declan Rice, obvious one. I am going to put Cobby Maynard in there because I think he's absolutely incredible. 
I think another player that's having a very good season, and I wasn't sure about him a year ago, but since about April, he's been really good for Liverpool. I've got Curtis Jones mm-hmm. in midfield. And then I've gone with Bellingham, Madison, um, yeah, and Foden, although I think Foden will play out wide. Um, so quite more attacking, but Maino could play six if needed, but Rice is just never injured. So I'm taking a bit of a risk there. Uh, so what? Sorry, what was you've got there? I'm crossing people out and and, and adding to mine here. I, I, I've got I've got I've got I've just gone with like four central players really, and then I'm going to do my number tens and my wingers and my attackers. So I'm just trying to figure. Yeah. I've got I've got. So so what would what did you have, Alice? Sorry. Um. So Declan Rice, Mayno, and Curtis Jones were my sort of more central players, and then Belling would be the fourth because I guess he can play eight or ten. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've got four as well. So yeah, I've got Declan Rice. Uh, I've got Jude Bellingham, I've got Ward Prowse, and I've got Conor Gallagher. And um, the reason I've gone with that is I don't want to take Henderson or Phillips. They don't deserve to go. And I, I'm sort of conflicted on Maynou because I do want him to go. But from a Man United point of view, I think it'd be so important if he just has a summer off. So I'm sort yeah. of like, he probably won't pick him anyway and just take Conor Gallagher for this summer and give Maynou a summer off. So I've gone very United-centric there. But that, yeah, that's my call. No, I to be honest, I have a massive love for Maine on a bias, but Conor Gallagher was, to be honest, that other name I would have gone with. And I was like, oh, I just, you know what, I want to bring Maine, but then I also want to keep him away from Southgate, but I think a bit yeah. of Man United bias in me. And then at 10, I've gone with, I guess, Bellingham will probably play there, and I've put Madison and Foden as the other options. Yeah, I think uh, the only other player I was going to throw into that was potentially uh, Cole Palmer uh, as an option. I think he's... Um... He's certainly a player, but he might be a bit similar to Kobe Maynard in a way that uh, taking him and then not using him is is probably not not worth it. And hopefully Southgate's going to leave anyway. So does, does he need experience of a tournament with a manager that's not going to be there? But I think, yeah, um, Madison and, and Foden would be the two that I would look at uh, as well. Um, so I, th- I think I've got I think I've got 19 now. Yeah. 19. So I've got six left. This is what I'm, I'm just doing my numbers as I go along. So I've got six left to cover with strikers. I'm on 18. And wingers. Okay. I think I've thrown in an extra player unless I've done bad maths. But uh, yeah. Okay. So <sighs> Madison and Bowen is 10. Definitely going to take him and him. Um, I would take him. Okay. Yeah. Do, do you want to, are you going to go wingers or strikers next? Uh, we'll do wingers because I actually have Cole Palmer down as a right wing option. Yeah. Good. Um, because the thing with Foden and Cole Palmer is they can play central, they can play out wide. I just put Foden down as the central option, but I'd probably stick him on the left. I put right wing, I've just gone with Palmer and Saka. Okay. Um, I actually have got... Um, I'm trying to think whether I would take Palmer or not. I've got... I've got Saka. Um, and I couldn't put Foden out there. Um... I'm sort of stuck on whether I would take Palmer or if, if anyone else is... Who have you got on your left then? Because I've got Rashford and Grealish. I've gone with... This is going to be controversial. I've gone with Rashford and Anthony Gordon. Yeah, yeah. That that's See, I've got him as a question mark with Palmer and Bowen. And I sort of with you, I, I do like the idea of Gordon. But I like the idea... I've got... I like the So I've got... I've got Saka. If I take Gordon, then I've got Saka, Grealish, Rashford, and Gordon as players who can play out on the wide. But obviously, Grealish could play as a ten. Rashford can play as a striker, um, and then you've got Saka and Gordon as you sort of specialist wide players. Yeah, I think wings the most difficult because there's so many options. You know, we're not even talking about Sterling, who would have been mm. one in the past. Bowen's been fantastic, and I feel like to not include him, he's unlucky to miss out. So it's definitely the most difficult one to pick. You could argue that, I mean, Rashford probably on form doesn't deserve to go. But as a United fan, I'm just like, he offers something very different to what a Gordon or or a Grealish or even a Saka does. He's just so direct and quick. And in in international football, that can be a real asset in the last 10, 20 minutes of a game. Yeah, that's sort of why I picked him. He's different and he's very good on sort of the counter-attack. He does well Mm -hmm. against the big teams. He was good at the World Cup and he could play striker if needed. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, and then that, I think that leaves me with two, unless I've done bad maths, and I'd just go Harry Kane and Watkins. 
yeah, that's just that same as me. I'm left with those two. I've gone with Harry Kane and Ollie Watkins because I think Ivan Tony's not really been around enough this season to gauge it, and Watkins has been great. Yeah, there's a few, I might be one short, but I think there's there's few differentials there around centre back, midfield, and on the wing. But in the main, I think that's 25 decent players. And as as I've said before, I just I just think if we don't win this, it's I'm not a Southgate fan, but if we don't win this, it's it's incredible. I just think you could put most Premier League managers in charge of that squad. I mean, I'd fancy my chances in charge of that squad to take us to the final. I think it's, we've just got to win it. There's, you know, you look at Saka, Kane, Bellingham, Rice, Stones. Oh, it's, Foden's it's, in great form yeah. as well. Yeah, I just, I just think, I don't think there's a, I mean, I think people will look at the Portuguese and the French squad and go, it's a good squad, but I, I'm not having it. I think that that England team and it's very experienced now, I just can't see I mean, I'm looking forward to the Euros. I don't know about you. I don't like Southgate, but I'm looking forward to it because I think this is surely going to be the first time in my lifetime I see England actually win something. Yeah, I feel like this is the strongest squad we've had in a long time. I'm excited for the Euros. I just is Southgate's the big question because he can get the best out of an OK squad, but he can't get the best out of a good squad. And I think we've got a good squad now. We need to play good football. And I think we struggled a lot under Southgate and his selections and his bias, but I generally agree with what you're saying. I think, especially with the talent coming through, Rice, Bellingham, Foden, Kane, I think we can win it. I think we should win it, but you just don't know with England. No, and also we're our squads look very good on paper, but of course we've got to bear in mind that he will take Henderson, he will take Phillips, and who knows what he'll take in relation to centre-backs beyond Maguire and Stones that are you know, part of his favourites club. So, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think if I think England will win it, but if they don't win it, there'll be one reason and that and that will be Southgate. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mark, for coming on the channel. Thanks, everyone, for watching today's video. Please do hit a like on the way up. Subscribe down below if you're new. And, I mean, I'm sure you already watch Mark's channel, but if you don't watch Mark's channel, go check him out. Give him a subscribe because you do great work over on there. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on and uh, appreciate it.